In 2000, an American scientist working for the military orders his Korean assistant to dump around 200 bottles of toxic chemicals down the drain, not caring about what this may mean for the local river. As years pass, people notice weird things in the river. Two fishermen pick up a fish in a cup and notice it doesn't look right, almost as if the creature was mutated. When one of the man tries to touch it, the creature reacts and makes the guy drop the cup to quickly swim away. In 2006 at a bridge, a businessman is considering self-deleting and notices something dark and big moving underwater before jumping. One afternoon near river, Gang Du falls asleep inside his dad's snack stall. A homeless boy called Sei Ju tries to steal some food, but his brother Sei Jin takes him away. The stall owner Hie Bong wakes his son up and reminds him to get to work. At that moment Gang Du sees his daughter Yun Seo coming back from school. Yun Seo is angry because Gang Du sent her drunk uncle to the parents' meeting instead of going himself. She's been ignoring her dad's calls because she has a very old phone with poor signal and she's embarrassed of taking it out in public. Then Gang Du and Yun Seo rush into the stall, where Gang Du has a hidden box with money he's been saving to buy his daughter a new phone. They turn on the TV and learn on the news that a dead body was found in the Han River, but they change channels to watch Gang Du's sister Nam Ju compete in an archery tournament. They're interrupted by Hie Bong, who sends Gang Du out with free snacks for some complaining clients. Gang Du finds them staring at a strange thing. Hanging from under the bridge, this thing starts moving and reveals to be a monster, which jumps into the water. Curious, Gang Du throws a beer can and the monster grabs it with its tentacle to eat it whole. The excited crowd starts throwing all sorts of food at the river, but the creature disappears. Everyone's about to leave when the monster suddenly appears on the surface and starts chasing after the crowd, tossing them around and killing them with its terrifying limbs. The crowd immediately runs away but this doesn't stop the monster from stomping on them and dragging them through the ground. Some people run to hide inside a container, so the monster follows them inside and gets stuck. Tourist Donald and Gang Du rush to the other end of the container, opening the door so the few survivors can escape. The monster comes out as well and continues its killing rampage, so Donald throws a floor tile but it doesn't hurt the creature. Then Donald and Gang Du lift a heavy sign post and throw it as well, yet this doesn't do any damage either. With a person dangling from its jaws, the monster jumps on Donald and starts hurting him while Gang Du runs away. He finds the sign post and this time he throws it on the monster's sensitive tail, finally hurting it. This also causes some monster blood to fall on Gang Du's face before he runs again. When Yun Seo finally leaves the stall, Gang Du's grabs her hand and drags her away with the crowd. The area is pure chaos and many people fall, including Gang Du. He loses his daughter's hand and blinding reaches for it again before going back to running, only to notice he grabbed the wrong teenager in the confusion. When he turns around, he's horrified to see the creature capturing Yun Seo and taking her away as it jumps back into the river. Gang Du jumps as well and watches how on the opposite shore, the monster spits a human and replaces them with Yun Seo before jumping and disappearing in the water. Moments later, the police and the military surround the area. Gang Du and Hie Bong are forced to evacuate the stall and Gang Du takes the box of coins with him. While the river area is closed up, a funeral is held for all the victims of the incident. Nam Ju arrives with her bronze medal and cries for her dead niece. They're also joined by the third sibling Nam Il, the only family member with a college education but currently unemployed because of his past as an activist. The whole family has a breakdown on the floor, gaining the attention of reporters who start recording or taking pictures. Nam Il reveals he heard about Gang Du grabbing the wrong hand and insults his brother for such a mistake, triggering a fight that must be stopped by the authorities. At that moment a bunch of men in hazmat suits come in as a mysterious smoke starts filling the room. An agent says there are buses waiting for everyone and asks if anyone touched the creature, so Gang Du mentions he got blood on his face. This causes the hazmat team to put him in a special bag and drag him away. Then the news finally cover the incident. Donald was a U.S. Army sergeant and he lost an arm, so he was sent to a U.S. Army hospital. The military medics discovered that the body parts that came in contact with the creature are having a strange reaction and blamed it on an unknown virus. The U.S. Army sent a sample to the Centers for Disease Control or CDC, and they've confirmed the creature from the river is the host of the virus. Now special forces trained in biological warfare are the only ones allowed near the river. Fumigation units are working on cleaning the river area with the smoke. All the people that were present during the incident and the funeral are sent to a hospital to be quarantined and tested. In the evening, Gang Du is scratching some spots on his back when suddenly his phone rings. Gang Du is shocked to hear Yun Seo's voice asking for help. She says she's in the sewers, but before she can share more, the communication cuts off. By the river, two fumigation agents stop their truck when they see something. Suddenly the monster comes out and knocks down an agent before landing on top of the truck. Minutes later, the creature leaves the guys in a sewer, where he's keeping a bunch of bodies to eat later. After the monster is gone, Yun Seo comes out of hiding from a hole in the wall and tries to wake the agent up, but the man is dead. She also searches his pockets for a phone, however it isn't working. In the hospital, Gang Du's family tries to tell a cop that Yun Seo is alive, but he doesn't believe them and says Gang Du dreamed the call. Trying to prove his point, Gang Du uses his phone to show how he saw the creature throw up a body, meaning his daughter could still be alive. 
The cop still thinks he was hallucinating and leaves after Hie Bong tries to bribe him. Moments later, the family sneaks out of the hospital and mingles among other patients in the corridor. A nurse recognizes Gung Du's dyed hair and calls him out, so the family starts running and pushes people out of the way. In the elevator, they change back into their clothes and Hie Bong confirms their ride on the phone. Sun they make it to the parking lot and a mysterious drive picks them up in a van. Nam Ju isn't fast enough and they almost leave her behind, but the driver makes a turn to find her while avoiding the people chasing after them. The cop tries to jump in too, so Gang Du pushes him away. Eventually the group reaches a warehouse outside town, where it's revealed that Hie Bong hired some criminals to get them out of the hospital and get them a few things that can help them find Yen Seo. The final bill ends up being way higher than expected and the criminals won't accept Hie Bong's jewelry, so instead they take all his credit cards. In the van, the siblings watch the news and learn they're wanted fugitives. The family leaves in, a fumigation truck that the criminals got for them with two hazmat suits, a few weapons, and a map of the sewers. Gang Du and Hie Bong punt on the suits while Nam Il and Nam Ju hide under a blanket. At the security check, the manager points out this truck belongs to a fumigation company that signed up at the last second, which he finds suspicious. Hie Bong throws a bag at him to bribe him before taking the truck into the river area, and the guy opens the bag to find the box of coins. Afterward the family follows the map to visit the sewers in the area, desperately looking for Yen Seo. Sometimes Gang Du runs behind the truck so the smoke will fumigate him too because he wants to be clean for his daughter. After a few hours of searching, they suddenly see something moving in the dark and Nam Ju feels something wet falling on her shoulder, so they open fire. But when they look up they just see a water leak. The liquid is Sei Ju's pee, who is sneaking around with his Sei Jin. The brothers carefully move around and make it to the family's snack stall, where they start taking a bunch of food. Sei Ju wants to take money too but Sei Jin stops him reminding him that taking money is actual theft but taking food is co re, the right of hunger. Once their bags are full, the brothers leave, only to be found by the monster. They immediately start running but the creature is faster and blocks their path. Moments later the family makes it to the stall and shares a warm dinner while pretending Yun Seo is with them to keep their hope up. Meanwhile the real Yun Seo is trying to gather water from a leak. When she hears the monster, she pretends to be unconscious and watches it drop the brothers before leaving. Yun Seo checks on them and discovers Sei Jin is dead but Sei Ju is still alive so she protects him from the creature's eyes. Back to the family, Nam Ju and Nam Il insult Gang Du because he's fallen asleep again. Hie Bong hates hearing this and shares what happened to Gang Du, who was smart as a child. When he was younger, Hie Bong was almost never home and would stay out all night. Gang Du went to the neighboring farms to take food under Seo Ri, but it wasn't enough for a healthy development. That's why he grew up to be slow-minded and his body sometimes randomly falls asleep. At that moment Gang Du wakes up and notices the monster is standing outside. Hie Bong opens fire and this enrages the creature, who runs toward the stall and starts pushing until it throws it on its side. Since it's close, Hie Bong fires again and causes the monsters to fall. Then the family comes out and notices the beast is still alive, so Nam Il also shoots it. The monster immediately runs away and climbs on the bridge, where it causes a bunch of cars to crash. Then it climbs under the bridge, jumping around while the guys keep on firing until they're out of bullets. The monster jumps in the water and the family notices the soldiers are coming, so they start running away. Gang Du says he has a bullet left, so Hie Bong takes his gun and tells his children to run to the trunk while he takes care of the monster. As soon as the beast comes out, Hie Bong tries to fire, only to discover Gang Du miscounted and there are no bullets left. The monster quickly knocks him down, then grabs him with its tentacle and smashes him on the ground, instantly killing Hie Bong. The siblings cry for their dead father, but their grief is interrupted by the authorities. While Nam Il drags Nam Ju away, Gang Du decides to hand himself in out of guilt. Sometime later, the news media announced that Donald died of the virus. The CDC decides they'll use Agent Yellow, a chemical system developed by the US, to fight virus outbreaks and biological terror. Spreading such toxic chemicals is considered unsafe by many citizens, who are ready to protest against it. News media also says that the virus has symptoms similar to a common cold, so people on the streets step away from anyone who sneezes or coughs. In the meantime, Nam Il meets with Fad Guevara, a friend of his from his activism days. Guevara sneaks Nam Il into his office after hours because he works for a telephone company and can track Yun Seo's call. They find it quickly on the computer, but to access the GPS they need a password. Guevara suspiciously keeps asking about Nam Ju, so Nam Il explains they split in the sewers and he doesn't know where she is. Since the password they found on a desk note isn't working, Guevara says he'll search the manager's office. However, he's only pretending and all his buddies are hidden there, waiting to capture Nam Il for the reward. At that moment Nam Il finds another password note and successfully enters the system, finally finding Yen Seo's location, the one Yo bridge. After he marks it on the map, he notices all the people coming out of the office to catch him. Nam Il puts a clip on a plug and inserts it in the outlet, causing a short that leaves the room dark. The team panics and searches the office, but by the time the lights come back, Nam Il is already escaping. On the street, he hears the police coming, so he has to jump off the bridge to escape. His body ends up pretty sore. 
so he passes out under the bridge after texting Yen Seo's location to Nam Ju. All this time, Nam Ju has still been searching for Yen Seo. She sleeps in bridge beams, sneaks around in the water not to be seen, and takes food from the family's store. She also charges her phone and sees her brother's text. Nam Ju immediately runs to the Wonhyo bridge while calling Gang Du to share the information. Unfortunately, the monster finds her and hits her before she can shoot her bow, causing her to fall into a very narrow sewer. Nam Ju falls unconscious and the beast can't reach her, so it just leaves. In the lab, Gang Du's hopes have revived and he tries to run out of the room, but the medical team immediately overpowers him and injects him with a sedative. However, an hour passes and he isn't unconscious, so the doctors decide to take the sample anyway. Gang Du screams in pain as the needle pierces his skin and gets the attention of an American doctor, who makes the other stop. With the help of a bilingual medic, Gang Du explains the situation with his daughter and how nobody listened to him. At first the American doctor asks questions as if he was interested, but sadly he's only pretending to test Gang Du's psychological state. He decides the virus is causing dementia so they must take a sample from Gang Du's head. The Korean doctor thinks this is a little too much, so the American guy takes him to the side and explains the truth. Donald died of shock during the operation and the autopsy didn't find any viruses. The tests on the quarantined people were negative too, so most likely there's no virus at all. Gang Du's English isn't very good but he can understand the basic, no virus at all, and demands an explanation. The doctors immediately take him to the operation room, where they take a sample from his brain. In the sewers, Yen Seo takes the clothing from the bodies and ties them together, adding a cop's baton at the end. With Seiju's help she throws it up and connects it to the sewer grill, but now it's out of her reach. At that moment the monster comes back so the kids run to hide in the hole and watch the monster throw up a bunch of human bones together with a beer can. Then it comes down to eat another person, only to hear the hiding duo. It inserts its mouth into the hole, so the kids move back until they're out of reach. After the operation, Gang Du pretends to be in a numb state. When a doctor takes a blood sample, Gang Du takes the chance to capture her and take the needle as a weapon. He threatens to spray blood with the virus on the other doctors, so they move away and allow him to get out. The lab is a container outside town and a bunch of soldiers are just having lunch. Using the doctor as a shield, Gang Du kicks the tables and then runs to escape in an ambulance. Under the bridge, Nam Il wakes up and discovers he was saved by a tramp. He asks for directions to the one heel bridge while taking the guy's empty beer bottles, offering money in return. The tramp breaks a bottle on Nam Il's head saying money can't buy everything, but he still agrees to be his guide. The duo takes a cab and during the trip, they use the empty bottles to make Molotov bombs. On the streets, people are gathering to protest against Agent Yellow which will also be released at Wonhyo Bridge. Back to Yen Seo, she notices comes out of the hole to find the beast sleeping. She throws a can to be certain it won't react, then she runs back and jumps on its big body to reach the clothing rope. She successfully grabs onto it but her relief is short because the monster uses its tentacle to bring her back down. It still looks asleep, so it may be its instinct reacting. As Seiju wets his pants in fear, Yun Seo barely moves her foot and wakes the creature up. It immediately jumps on both kids before they reach the hole. Minutes later, Gang Du finally finds the right sewer and is devastated to see all the bones. Fearing the worst, he goes down Yun Seo's makeshift rope and notices her name tag on her jacket. At that moment the monster appears but luckily doesn't see Gang Du and keeps going. At the same time Nam Ju wakes up and climbs out of the sewer to see the creature coming. She gets ready to shoot with her bow, but gets distracting by a panicking Gang Du. On the shore, a huge crowd is protesting against Agent Yellow with shirts that asks for Gang Du's freedom. The protesters are surrounded by the police and refuse to move, however everyone panics when they see the monster coming. The cops open. Fire while Gang Du appears on the bridge, asking them to stop because of his daughter's body. He jumps into the water at the same time a drone expels Agent Yellow, covering the area with toxic fumes that causes the protesters to get very sick. The beast starts to feel sick too and another cop tries to shoot it, but Gang Du appears to stop him. The monster is squirming on the ground in pain so Gang Du takes the chance to reach into its mouth, finding a human hand. He immediately pulls and releases the two kids, who sadly are dead. The drone keeps throwing Agent Yellow at the creature while masked agents record the whole thing and people get sick all over the place, including cops themselves. The three siblings gather around Yen Seo to cry for her. Gung Du finally snaps and breaks a sign to use the pole to attack the monster, making it bleed before he's pushed away. Then Nam Il starts throwing his Molotov bombs, causing the creature to run away from the flames. Eventually the creature ends up under the bridge and the tramp pours a bunch of gas on it. Nam Il throws his last bomb, which unfortunately slips from his hand and breaks next to him. Nam Ju steps in and lights an arrow on fire, shooting it right into the beast's eye and making its whole body catch on fire. Before it can run back to the water, Gung Du uses the pole again and inserts it into the monster's mouth, finally killing it. Afterward Gang Du checks on Seiju, curious to know if it was a friend of his daughter's. He discovers the kid is actually alive and carries him away from the toxic area. Many weeks later, Gang Du has cleaned up his act and is now in charge of the snack stall while taking care of Seiju. One night during dinner, the US. Authorities appear on TV to admit there was no virus, but the duo turns it off to eat in peace.